And hello, and welcome to a new playthrough of a Fire Emblem, Three Houses. So, last time, we went through Crimson Flower while also doing Cinder Shadows as a side story. This time, we're going to be going through the Golden Deer uh, route, and as an FYI, I do a lot of editing, hence why I'm here and not at the beginning of the game. Basically, I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the redundant stuff. So, we're going to just speed through all the stuff that sort of copy-paste. I'm still recording well ahead and whatnot. Uh, in between Sir, uh, the Crimson Flower and this, I've done a lot of research on just what actually makes the gameplay system tick. So I actually understand it a lot better, at least in terms of character development. We are playing on hard, classic, just like before. But, uh, I'm going to be, for each and every character developing unique and particularly unusual builds. Things that feel out of the norm, or at least attempting to be out of the norm. There will be exceptions for reasons I'll point out as I get through them. Uh, to start here, basically I want to lay out my game plan for each individual character I plan to make part of my main force. Uh, those are the ones I'm going to fight with. I might recruit a couple others uh, in terms of just people. But in general, I, I don't want to recruit too many, or else it's sort of, considering what happens down the line, I don't like, I don't like the idea of ruining that tension too much. I also don't like the idea of recruiting teachers and fighting with them, uh, that sort of thing, or the mercenaries and stuff like that. I sort of like the idea of working through the story with you as their teacher, and like working with a class and stuff like that. So. Uh, let's start with our main character here, who we are now the male character as, and his name is Emil. Which means to copy, to emulate, and whatnot. So in the same way Echo was a name regarding Echoes, uh, to copy, emulate is a male name, for Echo is a female name. Uh, Emil is a name that sort of has that Echo uh, meaning to it, in a sense. Now, I laid out my game plan for each and every one of these guys uh, in a big spreadsheet. So I'll be able to go by that throughout the entirety of this. It's not like up in my head. I can put it on screen even for each of them. So to start with Emil, the premise behind the build I wanted to do was in the father's horse footsteps. Basically, a horse class to follow along Geralt's lineage of that. Uh, a general method I try to do in order to make this a little bit more of a challenge but not like completely screw myself uh, was I wanted to set four different attributes that a certain person could use the main four skills that I'd be training up. I want it for every strength that I had in there a weakness to accompany it basically. Uh, Emil's not a good example of that because he doesn't have any weaknesses. So, what I did was, on the fourth one, I'm going to be primarily doing uh, basically things outside of authority. Basically things in order to get specific classes. I have a, uh, as you can see on the left, the far left, you have the character profile, as well as the, what the final class wants to be, which is Dark Knight for a meal, uh, as well as the premise and classes, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Enlightened one, because that's like the standard class you go into, and it's like, eh, nah. And Falcon Knight, because that's what I did previously. I know it's female-specific, so it's sort of pointless to disallow it, but that's what I had on the character last time, so I was like, nah, let's avoid that. Uh, and then to the side of that, I have a set of the growth rates, spells, personal ability, unique arts, and skill strengths. This is just the information that's unique to each character, and I try to set it up so that 
I could basically have that there while I was working through what I wanted to do. The thing that really stood out to me when I was researching on how this all actually worked was growth rates. So I did not know that the level ups were based on just random percent chances like the attacks and stuff like that. It's just like, like I sort of figured there was like variation between them, possibly like character to class combination or something like that. But I didn't realize it was just straight up RNG. Like, what? That, that could go very, very badly. That could go incredibly badly. So mostly based on class list and strengths and growth rate, I decided on what sort of concept I wanted to put down for a character. Ultimately for Emil, what I want to do is I want a jack of all trades, which honestly, it'll probably end up being very muddled, but someone who do uh, fighting magic, support magic, and some combat stuff, basically swords and uh, lances to some extent. Mainly. Mainly to get the classes. It's mainly gonna be sword for the combat stuff, but more than anything, it's mainly gonna be magic. So that's sort of the idea. And as you can see at the side, uh, towards the uh, other side of the priority skills, I have a set of class progressions. Basically, what I'm figuring is I'll be able to get probably four classes in for all of them. Regardless of where they end, uh, I know what the class is, what skill to the side of that I will need in order to acquire it, what the mastery part of it is. If it's uh, italicized, those are, those are ones that I want to go out of my way in order to master, as well as a vital growth, which is basically apparently classes as well have additions and or subtractions in uh, some cases. Or subtract, or if we're in case of HP, sometimes it's subtraction from like the standard amount you get for a class. So, like sometimes it gives like five when like basically every class gives like ten or twenty or something like that. Uh, those are also there, which also change which classes I wanted to go through for a particular character, so I could up certain stuff. Like I looked up uh, the calculations for um, like crit rates, uh, s like doubling up speed and. Uh, attack and all that sort of stuff. And then eventually I settled on what I sort of envision the final set of abilities to be at the end there. And that's sort of my roadmap for how I plan to go about developing each character. So that's a meal. So I figured we could go through each character here and I could throw up that as well as hearing Claude's explanation about each of them. <laughs> Piqued your interest, have I? As luck would have it, I'm pretty curious about you as well. But what's life without a bit of mystery? Let's just spend the next year or so learning about each other little by little. And the idea I have for Claude, role premise is, can't touch this. So basically the idea I had in mind was, uh, pretty board, a pretty boy dodges your attack and punches you in the jaw. Uh, that was my idea for Claude, basically. Uh, so my idea would make him a war master. I wanted to disallow his standard class, which is apparently called Barbarossa, like Edelgard had a armor lord and emperor and whatnot. And Wyvern Lord, which is also... So for the disallowed ones, basically what I did was I went online and I did some basic research just looking up, hey, what's the best class for so-and-so? And I found what seemed to be generally what people typically recommended and whatnot. A lot of those didn't have the DLC classes included, so it was hard to get a gauge if any of those were really better. Um, but I tried to use some of my own judgment on with, uh, whether they would be or not. Claw's really good in speed and dexterity, so I've sort of figured he'd be really good with avoidance and getting crits off and stuff like that. Uh, so basically... Why did I put him in faith? Right, right, right. So basically the idea is I wanted to give him Brawl. He has a hidden uh, budding talent in Axe, which can get him up to War Master. And he's good at flying, but he's also good at faith. So I could bring him through this uh, uh, path that would bring him also to Warmonk, which has a mastery skill of Brawl Avoid, which is a lot like that sort of Void that I had for Edelgard, which I figured, yeah, that could be really good. And then have that move on to having into War Master and having just sort of like alert stance, sort of a, like like sort of with like an alert stance using War Master that goes out there and punches people in the face. <laughs> Uh, it just sounds fun. Again, 
that I, I mainly am basing these guys on just like a general premise and honestly a lot of them turned into like how to dodge or how to like how they dealt with enemies on the enemy turn with some of them being more like how can they get a bunch of sort of damage on their turn it sort of became one or the other in a lot of ways huh. he's the heir of Gloucester territory if you haven't already picked up on him, he's a bit arrogant and fancies himself a ladies' man. That said, deep down he's really devoted and honest. Though I wouldn't mind never hearing him talk about his noble obligations ever again. Oh, I still hear that. So for Lorenz, what I sort of figured would be that he could be someone who actually stood by his words. And I don't know if he, he might be actually, but instead of just being an annoying noble talking about all these noble shit things. He could be someone who actually, you know, places his actions over words and is a protector of the people, and I sort of figured a great knight would make sense for that. Uh, it seemed generally people saw, saw him as good as not an armored class, and uh, or a magic class like Dark Knight and whatnot. Which, I think that had more to do with his spell list. So, conceptually, what I want to do is uh, bring him up in axe, armor, the main things. Riding, he's a strength in. But I also want to bring him up in brawling in order to get healing focus. So that offsets the uh, strength and weakness there. And a lot of these, I decided that I wanted to get death or fiendish blow. I think it was recommended fairly early on in terms of recommendations for developing them. Death blow and fiendish blow were just good. Because they just add a little bit more damage. So... You need to use two extra damage while in formation of the battalion. That sounds like a pretty good ability, ultimately. Did I get that right? Yes, I did get that right. So yeah, just have him as one of my armored classes by the end. And I really like using uh, healing focus on um, Caspar last time when he was my armored unit, so I figured that would work pretty well. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. Seems like he's had a rough life. Despite all that, he's just about the most cheerful guy you'll ever meet. His passions are training, eating, and... Actually, that's about it. <laughs> uh, he seems like he'll be a nice guy. So, for Raphael... He was honestly one of the later ones that I developed an idea for. Basically, the concept was... A big guy flies high, takes the sky! Just like, you know... He does not seem like he'd be nimble enough to be flying. I guess that maybe that's just my opinion. So I find the concept sort of funny. Uh, basically, my idea is to develop him a lot like I did Vetra in, uh, uh, in Crimson Flower, where he becomes a wyvern lord. In this case, my idea is to have him as lance and bow wielding, ultimately, which sort of evens out a lot of that stuff. Same idea of death blow and just moving sort of that through that sort of uh, development. I didn't put a ton of additional thought into this one, but it is what it is, you know? It's just one of those ones that was later on, and it's like, what do I even do with them at this point? He's the second son of a merchant family. Since his brother will inherit the business, he's training to become a knight. If you ask me, it doesn't seem like he truly wants to be a knight. He's probably just doing it to please his parents. So, for Ignatz, he has a ton of fucking speed, luck, and dexterity. Luck and dexterity, in particular, seem to contribute a lot to criticals, which seemed like a good thing for him. So what I wanted for him, and it seemed like a complete opposite of his personality, was like a glory hound hero. Someone who was a crit glass cannon, and I made a pun glasses. <laughs> that sort of thing. Basically, he's gonna be really weak, but he's gonna do so much, uh, uh, like just crits and damage and stuff like that. And I figured the hero class just felt like, for someone like him to develop into a hero, it just felt good. From what I could tell, the hero class isn't considered very good, but in general, people seem to think that he'd be good for a bow knight and assassin, basically stuff involving the bow. So it's like, yeah, no, you know, that sounds fun. Which basically means putting him through sword and axe, and uh, flying, I believe, there for alert stance. Because, no, I didn't really put alert stance in. Maybe I'll do that later. 
Uh, again, these are roadmaps. I'm not game plans and whatnot, so I'm not 100% beholden to them. Basically, the idea is to give him, because a hero has built in Vantage, try to give him Death Blow and Wrath. Basically, make it so that he can do a ton on his turn. He'll get hurt, maybe go below half health, and then Vantage crit anyone who tries to attack him. Which might be better if he wasn't using a sword, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll eventually have that, um... We'll eventually have the ability to, um... Uh, you know... Uh, give the counterattack stuff to people from any distance, so... Yeah. Lysithia is the daughter of Count Ordelia, and is probably the youngest student here. But watch out, she gets angry if you treat her like a child. As for me, I do it on purpose. You have to make your own fun in this place, you know? Oh, it's so fun. So far, Lysithia, I wanted to do something different than what I did for Crimson Flower, which is Dark Flyer. She seemed to be generally uh, associated with doing Grummery, because from what I saw, and I still generally agree, she's a bit of a magic nuke, isn't she? Uh, with a magic 60 grow the rate. Like, my goodness. So my concept that I decided going with was just like a really fast magic sort of nuke him with unique movement tactics, which is basically what the trickster is. So the idea that she'll have 11 sword as well as uh, reason attacks and whatnot that she can use to basically go and bomb the people, as well as having stuff like uh, foul play and whatnot that she can use in order to like switch positions with people and do some unique tactics in that regard. I figured that would be interesting. In general, though, um, for a glass cannon, Trickster is a really interesting uh, like class to have. If you look at its growth rates, it actually has really low health gro uh, growth rates, but it has like really large speed and luck, I believe. What was it? Speed, luck, and dexterity. It just has really high in, which is like, whew, you add that to really high magic and whatnot. I can imagine that being very, very interesting. Marianne is Margrave Edmund's daughter, and that's pretty much all I know about her. She doesn't interact much with other students, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks here have never even heard her speak. So when I was looking up Marianne, I saw a lot of mentions of Falcon Knight, Holy Knight, Grimmery being pretty common classes for her. I think Mortal Savant was considered an odd one out, and I saw it mentioned at times, especially when I was looking at just, like, yinny classes people like to use. But, um, I sort of went with that. Uh, again, she is one of the later ones that I was developing. Uh, in general, she seems like she's good at magic. Stuff like that, so my idea is basically to give her a lance and reason as her main things that she can do. Uh, she gets, uh, uh, combat art that's basically... Frozen Lance, which I believe is the equivalent of, like, that Mystic Blow, where it's like a magic attack, basically, with any normal weapon. So, basically, have her move through and become a Mortal Savant that uses lances and, uh, normal attacks and stuff like that. And I know, I I'm sort of going against some of the classes in my setups. They're not necessarily meant to be absolutely optimal. I am not a min-maxer. I will never be a min-maxer. I'm just trying to do stuff that would be interesting. And I know Mortal Savant, like, gets sword fair which, from my understanding, just increases the power of attacking of swords, essentially. So it's like, yeah, you swords with this one, dummy. But it's like, it's not as interesting that way, in my mind. I guess that's just my sort of take on it. But, uh, yeah. Basically, using magic weapons and various attacks. That's my concept behind her. Hilda is the only daughter of Duke Goneril. It seems her father and brother coddle her quite a bit. If you look up Lazy in the dictionary, her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting it. Not too unusual for a noble, I guess. Yeah, a little. So for Hildum, my plan is essentially a mounted, give, make her a mounted horse set up and then proceed to attack things with an axe. I know she's good with an axe, but the idea behind this was more driven by the idea that she gets a bolting. And, she, like, out of everyone I have, I think she's the only one that gets, like, a really long-range magic. So the concept is basically just, like, normal mounted physical sort of setup. Use her, like, innate high strength and speed and whatnot to make use of that. 
and give her just like the innate uh, ability to assist from a distance to using bolting and stuff like that. Basically, that's the concept. I think it could be interesting uh, having sort of a mixed match there. Leone enrolled because she wants to be a mercenary. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and as stingy as they come. A habitual saver, too. I think she's hoping to repay her village for helping to send her here. Leone's sort of a weird one for my development, because honestly, Falcon Knight is basically what I gave her, and that's probably not an uncommon for, uh, one for her. But one, at this point, she was like one of the last ones I was putting together. It's like, I need someone to use a bow. Like, I sort of had on Raphael, but he used more lances than that. And I need someone to use a bow, and it's her strength, and she doesn't have any weaknesses either. <laughs> God damn it, Leone, have a weakness so I can do this properly. But in general, people thought Bow Knight was the base thing, so I tried to avoid that. Uh, Falcon Knight isn't traditionally for bows, so basically the idea is a Falcon Knight flying. Uh, get her, like, vantage, which I think would be good, too. Uh, give it with a bow in her hand and make her very high dodge, too. Basically, give her all the components in order to be able to do as much as she can when an enemy attacks her. Basically. Because I also have, like, close counter and whatnot on the setup that I'm planning. Yeah, I can only do so much for her uh, because I was at the sort of end of my rope in terms of concepts. I wanted to use Falcon Knight because like, it's a good class and I like it. Just like, I want to use the different flying classes. I like flying, flying's fun. Uh, and I needed a bow user and she doesn't have any weaknesses. So it's just sort of like, nah, but that's the idea at the very least. So uh, after this, I have a few more outside the class that I'm going to recruit. Annette is Baron Dominic's niece. She is a talented student who scored extremely high marks at the Royal School of Sorcery. She's cheerful and hardworking. Brilliant, really. Though, she can be a bit oblivious at times. I hear she caused an explosion in the kitchen last night. So, for Annette, which is one of the two blue lines that I want to uh, recruit this time, uh, along with Mercedes, uh, <laughs> Partly for both of them as a uh, as an apology for what I did during Crimson Flower. With Annette, I sort of ignored her birthday. And with Mercedes, I kill her. So, I think it's about an even trade for both of them to get recruited this time around. Uh, for Annette, I was thinking sort of the same ideas I had with Constance last time. Make her a war cleric, sort of like, she's small and cute and it's like, when she punches someone it'll be a lot more funny. Uh, that's basically the idea, uh, which means that I give her brawling reason as well as faith and uh, armor and axe to get that stuff up to what it needs to... Well, armor to be have a weakness, basically. That's the idea. I'm generally assuming we, the ones I'll recruit because uh, I need to recruit them. I won't be able to control quite a few of their um, uh, stuff, so I'm going to focus on recruiting her, and then I'm going to focus on recruiting Mercedes. Uh, after that. I'm gonna assume I won't be able to pick out the first of the four classes, basically. So I'm basically focusing after that. The idea is I want to give her Fiendish and Death Blow, as well as, uh, Brawl Avoid. Basically make it so that she can do either and then also have a chance. I'm more leaning to the idea of small girl punches people hard. Uh, and I like that. I think it's funny. I think it has not <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. Uh, I don't know why I... I hear she was born to Imperial nobility, but a twist of fate brought her to the kingdom. She may seem carefree on the surface, but she's actually a kind soul who pays careful attention to everyone around her. So for Mercedes, I have a hard time imagining that I'll be able to do a ton with her, so I sort of threw out the whole weakness and strength to stuff and just tried to avoid common classes, which were Grammary Bishop, Holy Knight, basically. The idea I have behind her is basically make her Dark Flyer, make it so she can move a bunch, make it so that she can heal a bunch, and those are her main things. She can do a little bit of attacking, but mainly she's healing, uh, which is her role in most stuff, because I expect her to be the last person I recruit. Yeah, I don't feel like I'll be able to deviate too much from uh, some of the stuff she'll have developed by then, whatever those are. So... I wanted to bring one Black Eagle onto my team. And the same way I ended up having Lysithia for um, Crimson Flower, I had one Golden Deer. Um, and I was trying to decide who. 
I'd say generally my favorite characters and the ones that I was most interested in bringing on would have been Petra, Bernie, or Kaspar. Uh, I was actually having a hard time. I was thinking like, oh, maybe I'll do a poll for that or something like that. But then just I stumbled upon uh, information that apparently Kaspar has a uh, paralog with Mercedes. So then I thought, nah, no, we can do that instead. That was sort of the tiebreaker in the end. So the idea I ended up giving to Kaspar was something I'd sort of been playing around with my head for a bunch of different characters at this point. Uh, just because I liked the sort of image of it when I was using it with Echo during the last run. An assassin with a lance. Uh, and, like, assassin has pretty darn good growth rates in general. So basically, the best stuff for Casper were War Master, and I used Fortress Knight last time, so basically I discluded those. So I sort of figured that I could get him uh, pretty early on, because from my understanding I can use Renown in order to up support levels, so I can probably recruit him pretty early, honestly. Uh, and basically develop his alliance, his, uh, basically his lance, and then everything else in order to get him into certain classes in order to get him um, death blow. I think hit plus 20 would be good for that too. Uh, and then get him to assassin eventually. Um, not anything too original like gameplay wise concept. I just sort of like the idea of an assassin with a lance basically. And our last two are from the Ashen Wolves. I'm going to recruit all of them in order to get their like abyss exam stuff. But I'm only going to use two of them in battle. That would be uh, Yuri as the first one and Happy as the other one. For Yuri, <laughs> this is probably the most out there build that I had for anyone. Just because I had a really interesting idea in terms of how you could go about using him. Because of his relic giving advanced movement. As well as allowing you to move afterwards and stuff like that. As well as giving him a bunch of extra abilities when he uses it and whatnot with his crest. His typical ones were Trickster and... I sort of figured Mortal Savant would also be good for him, in the same vein why Trickster would be good for him. But, basically, I figured a Fortress Knight that had really unique movements, and could also use Vantage, Wrath, <laughs> uh, have Vs, and in general just like, body anything you could use. Like, step up to someone, attack it, back off, stuff like that. I, I feel like you could do some really interesting things with a Fortress Knight with high mobility and the ability to move afterwards, too. And that might just be a great knight, but if you keep the defenses of Fortress Knight at the same time... I don't know, it seems like a really interesting idea to me. And for the last member of our army, Happy, who I decided, I sort of figured, could be a dancer. Again... A Valkyrie, Dark Flyer seemed like the obvious ones. I wanted to avoid the DLC classes with them, because they seemed like obvious picks. Uh, and I needed someone for Dancer. So basically, the idea with her was in the same vein as I had Edelgard, to make her a bit of a dodge tank, basically, and have her focus on magic attacking with, uh, well, with Faith and, like, Eleven Sword, basically. Not using Reason. Uh, not developing Reason and stuff like that. Mainly Sword, uh, Eleven. Uh, ma mainly using Eleven Sword and whatnot. Having the sort of void, because you, I want to take advantage of the sort of void, is the big idea. And using faith to support, and if absolutely necessary, attack, essentially. And you could have advantage, and alert stance, and sword prowess, and all that sort of stuff. Basically, a lot of the same stuff, but a bit more focused from the beginning to being a dodge tank. So, those are all the ones I plan to develop. I think I'll probably also recruit, like I said, the other Ashen Wolves, as well as. I want to recruit Alois as well. Uh, I don't know everyone who has supports with each other. I don't know that. I'm not trying to base it on that. And I don't want to recruit too many people. I know I'm probably not going to see everything in the game. That is what it is. I'm perfectly okay with that. I don't think I'm going to see everything in the game. I think I'm, I think the game's going to wear out as welcome well before I get to that point. I won't rule out the possibility of doing blue lines after this. But I... I... I have a hard time imagining myself going through this a second time and then coming back to it and being like, yeah, I still want to play it. Because I've, I've gone through one playthrough of like 90 plus hours and I'm here just like developing all these different like uh, builds is so interesting. I want to play it again. And it's hard to imagine myself being like that again for another playthrough. 
and the main reason that I want to do this is because it just feels fun to do unique, weird stuff. Honestly, I don't want to, you know, hamper myself too much, but it's just fun. I'm interested in the Golden Deer uh, story and stuff like that. I don't look forward if, uh, if it does end up going the same story-wise, I don't look forward to going up against Tater Guard. But, uh, in general, yes. should be interesting. That's so. Uh... So, this time we have Emil as the main character, who I'm giving a little bit of a different personality to. Uh, basically, instead of being a lighthearted, like, goofball who's, you know, never able to show it on their face, that sort of thing, uh, instead of coping with being a lifelong mercenary who killed people in that way, Emil's sort of a heartless person. He'll joke around in the same way, but it's a bit more cruel and stuff like that. So I figured that would be a bit of a more interesting foil to Claude. Someone with a passion to complete the job, basically. To achieve what they want to achieve, but not maybe not necessarily the uh, uh, whimsy or care to start out with. So, Golden Deer. Let's so go! Claude, Your heart I'm has back. Made its choice, then. All I I'm back, Claude. That you guide these open Wait, what? Are you really our new homeroom professor? Pretty sure. Is that true? You aren't quite what I had pictured. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I was sure you'd be roped into joining the Knights. Don't tell me. You chose this class just to get to know me better, right? I'm flattered, really. That is way more part of it than you really probably think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Now that you're our professor, maybe I should choose my words more carefully. Eh, I don't mind. Flirt with me all you want. Oh, well then. Since we're pretty close in age and all, I suppose formalities aren't all that necessary. One must truly marvel at the exceptionality of this appointment, becoming a teacher to students almost the same age as yourself. How unusual. <laughs> Lorenz. Detention. I've heard you are a skilled mercenary, but I cannot shake my discomfort at your new position. Okay, definitely detention. Are you really as strong as they say? Let's see your biceps. I bet I packed on more muscle than you. So, oh, I doubt goodness. that. Apparently, our new professor was personally recommended by Alois, one of the knights. How do you know that? No one should know that at this point, right? Well, whatever. Anyways, yeah, problem children. This is exactly what it seemed like looking at them from the outside. As far as skill goes, I saw it with my own eyes. What's more, Teach here is the child of the most renowned former captain of the Knights of Seros. I heard. There's no way a child of the Captain isn't worthy. It's simply not possible. The Captain? Who are you talking about? Captain Geralt, of course. The most notable Captain of the Knights of Saros and a peerless mercenary. Uh, you're exaggerating a bit. It's not that good. Huh. It doesn't matter what you think of him. Captain Geralt deserves nothing but respect. You don't think you're like one day of training or whatever it ended up being? You think that gives you better perspective than me, who has lived with him my entire fucking life? Hmm. Well, after working as a mercenary alongside a father figure such as he, I have high hopes for our professor. Just because someone is special doesn't mean their children are special too, Lysithia. Assuming that a child is going to be exceptional just because of their lineage is a bad idea. Don't you agree, Marianne? Huh? Oh, um, yes, I suppose so. Also, Hilda's hair at the moment. What is happening? Well, we can find out for ourselves in battle. I can't wait to see what tactics you've learned from the captain. Nothing? A battle? Shouldn't we have a welcome party or something first? I'll get the meat. How savage. I propose a nice conversation over tea instead. I am more than willing to procure some high quality leaves. Tea? You can't get to know someone over tea. If there's no meat involved, it's not a party. Your common sensibilities are grating to my noble ears. Please quiet yourself. Problem, children. Also, I'm totally in Raphael's side for this. <laughs> Sorry for the bickering, Teach. As you can see, the Golden Deer House is a rowdy bunch. 
we're not especially unified. You'll find nobles and commoners alike here, those who are dedicated to their studies alongside slackers. But hey, that just makes your life more exciting, right? I really hope you're looking forward to the year ahead as much as I am. I mean, you really sound like it. So very excited, never changing your tone. Always a little whimsical, a little happy. Hmm. I feel like I have a decent read on Kalan from uh, what I saw of him in Crimson Flower and how he went about dealing with that. But, you know, lots of things could change. Your renown has increased as a special perk from your new game plus save Happy file. Professors of the eight notes pay careful. So I did jump through this previously, where I um uh, went and ch uh, checked how exactly it worked. Apparently, I have like 16k renown or some shit like that. And you can spend it on a bunch of stuff. For now, let's set people's goals in order to align properly with my new. Uh, Goal, uh, game plan for each of them, yeah? Oh, so wait, we've unlocked the... Huh. I didn't realize we unlocked, um, everything in the armory at this point for buying stuff. Okay, 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 okay. Interesting. And there's also all these, too. I'm not sure if I really want to use these. Again, I'm playing a new game plus, but... It's one of those things where it's like, it can give a lot of advantages, but uh, you can pick and choose what you actually want to use if they feel like they're excessive. I might use these down the line for now. I think probably not. Ah, uh, you can carry Endgame data over New Game Plus. Endgame saves and New Game Plus saves are indicated by Sothis Mark. New Game Plus, you can retain renowned high battalions as well as your shop in... Uh, and Saint Statue level. So those are retained. And I also get a bunch of renown. You can also use your journal to spend renown to unlock professor levels, which I will do. Support levels, skill levels, combat arts and abilities, game for mastering classes you unlocked in your clear game save. Use the unit appearance option, etc., etc., which we already could do. The crest powers and whatnot. Okay, DLC supplies, which is included, uh, also includes more stuff this time because of the Apparently, completion of the side story. Chalice of what? Also, ten thousand renown. Oh boy! When do I get to go to the abyss? I think the most of the most of the renown I'm gonna end up using is down there, probably. So, professor level. First things first. A. I did get to this point and tried this out previously, so. It doesn't cost much to get your professor level up. And I'm back to having adjuvants too. Which is good, so I can, you know, involve people uh, earlier and more often. Support levels. It's only what you have unlocked with people, uh, people previously. So because I plan to recruit Kaspar. <laughs> Already have him up in an A, right? Definitely. Um, and then I haven't done anything with them, so... I'm not going to worry too much about it. I could get Marianne up since I did get one of hers, but I'm not really too worried about that at the moment. In terms of other things I could do, uh, skill levels, apparently, and I think it's only to the level you got it previously, yeah, because I got it up to B+, plus or like flying. So I could get my alert stance, ba uh, alert stance back, too. And it's not like I've used almost any of these characters before. So basically, it's just, you know, I could, I could, I could also do this and immediately get, um, Dark Spikes Tea. <laughs> uh, or alternatively, if I'm not quite there for that, then again, I'm not really too concerned with defeating the Death Knight. Especially since I'm not planning to bring anyone through Dark Mage or anything like that. It's not part of my plan. Uh, what was the last one? Class abilities, same idea. Where I could go get, like, Darting Blow and uh, Triangle Attack and Steel, and it really makes me realize how little of these I actually mastered <laughs> going through it. I really did not do that that well. Well, from the Saint statues and whatnot, 
Uh, I, I did end up looking up ways to increase that because I had noticed, like, I did not master a ton of them throughout that. Um, one, having the same statue with the double class experience should help considerably uh, from the get-go. And, uh, in general, the ones I'm playing to master are if I'm... Usually I'm playing to master two across the course of it, maybe three, if I'm going to end up on, like, an advanced class level class and the actual amount of time that it takes, the amount of experience needed is relatively lower. And if I do that, usually I'm staying on two intermediate class levels and trying to master two of them, if I'm doing it that way. So, ah, uh, either way, I feel as though it should work out well enough. I did, through looking that up, come upon some methods of basically grinding it that involve, like, letting... Because apparently it happens every time you take an action, so you can, like, leave one enemy left and have them just sort of take pot shots that you heal up constantly on a person and you can go to the 99 turn limit and stuff like that. It probably won't do that. I might, might, might do some short sessions just to increase, like, everyone's, like, I'll use more turns than normal or stuff like that on an, uh, on an additional one that I'm, like, vastly out-leveling or something like that in order to, like, do that same idea, but not, like, actually grind out, like, the mastery, just, you know... Speed it up a little bit, maybe. So. Uh, I'm also not planning to do lost items. I'm not going to be talking to everyone. I'm probably not going to be talking to many people. Yes. Uh, in between chapters and whatnot. Just, uh, you know, speed up the process okay. of redundancy, especially in this early time. Yes. Okay. I think the main use for now at this point is probably going to be, like, the Abyss stuff. Because it seemed like there's a lot of stuff you could do down there at the altar and whatnot. As well as, like, bringing people there that I didn't really participate much in throughout all this. Did you hear the news, Teach? Looks like we're gonna have a good old mock battle between the houses. The Golden Deer House isn't exactly what you'd call an elite group just yet. So you may want to whip everyone into shape with some extra training. After all, competition is only fun if you win. <laughs> to that end, I'd better prepare as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was researching what it's like to live here long before I even enrolled. Want me to fill you in, Teach? Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of the same stuff. Thanks, though. So, about the mock battle that's coming up, you don't mind me sitting it out, do you? As a fragile maiden, I'm useless in battle. I'll just cheer everyone on instead. From what I can tell, it's mainly the house leader and their closest confidant and or assistant or whatever that has dialogue changes based on what class right, you have right. uh, most of the time at the very least. Everyone else is sort of written like they're always in your class what or the? never in your class, basically. Uh, one other weird thing in I don't know if this happened in uh, the last one. I don't remember her just standing out here at the beginning. Um, I uh, was just heading back to my room. Bye! See ya, Bernie. Hope I don't have to kill you. We'll see, though. Uh, yeah, I don't remember her standing out there before, but maybe that's just me. And why not? Because this is the people I plan to recruit. They seem like a good one to start off with. And then again, I could get motivations up early. That also might be a good idea. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. Okay, cool. Nice. I knew I could. Man, there really isn't much to do during this time. And I can say no because I plan to do absolutely nothing with him. <laughs> Already got him to max, anyways. Ah, uh, how nice. How nice. I can already set battalions. Yes, yes, I can. Oh boy. Time for a mock battle, eh? Hmm. How should we go about this? Crush them. Crush them without mercy. Well, you'll be our commander, that much is for sure. Just don't screw it up and everything will be great. Gotta teach. No pressure. No pressure at all. Eh, I'm not concerned. Right. I'll do whatever I can to help, too. I mean, I'm kind of obligated to. 
For example, if I add a little something to their food to upset their stomachs... Don't even think about it. We're supposed to be doing a mock battle to gauge our success here. That's the entire point, right? Let's not... Let's not... Sully the data. Yeah, yeah, wink wink, I read you. You can't officially condone that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. But say, hypothetically speaking, students from the other houses started racing to the infirmary. As far as anyone knows, it could just be a harmless little stomach bug making the rounds. Well, well, what a fascinating conversation you two are having. May we join? Claude, I can't believe you would stoop to such crooked schemes to gain the advantage. Have you no honor? Not really. <laughs> if that was really my scheme, I wouldn't be talking about it out in the open. I'm afraid you'll have to wait until our battle to see what's really in store. It's irrelevant anyhow. Whatever you have planned won't save you from a crushing defeat. She has a point. Still, I'm rather eager to see what sort of schemes that mind of yours conjures up. You uh. heard him teach. We can't let these fine folks down. Eh, well, if they insist. Ah, we'll be fine, right? <laughs> Are you serious, Teach? Well, if a crooked scheme is really what you're after, I've got more than a few of those up my sleeve. Also, I'm gonna note, I never really made note of this before, but wow, his fucking, like... Like, cuffs. Those are fucking huge. Why? I can't stop looking at them now. They're just so big and out of place. What? Oh, how precious. Looks like you and the students have become fast friends. While I am pleased that you are taking the initiative to acquaint yourself with the students, I'm afraid it's about time for the faculty strategy meeting. I'm sorry, professors. It's about time I return to my training anyway. Claude, Edelgard, until we meet again on the battlefield, farewell. I look forward to assessing your abilities. I hope you don't disappoint. Why are his cuffs so big? What the fuck? How are people going up in Barbarossa? What? <laughs> what? Wait, no, what, wh wait, what? Why? What? What? The fuck? That makes no sense. So, this is the stage for the mock battle. The command's all yours, Teach. No problem. I'm sure you already understand, but the how Okay. They don't have it. That is interesting. Didn't they have an archer up front? I could have sworn. For uh, Claude's when we did this with a... Uh... They're exactly the same, though. They even ha uh, have Hanuman still. Man, he really went to this one quickly, didn't he? <laughs> I will fight on the front lines. I can stop the enemy's advance with grace. Do you have Lady Edelgard's permission to... <laughs> I suppose I've no choice but to provide cover. Thank you, Hubert. <sighs> we are off to a terrible start. Ash, can you move to the front lines? I want to lure the enemy this way. Got it, Your Highness. Leave it to me. Once you finish preparing, make your move. Did you? Mercedes? Keep our enemy occupied until then. I'm on it. It does seem to be a theme. Oh my. We'll try our best. I wonder if it'll be the same with the, um... Battle of Eagle Lion. <laughs> Where, like, the one on the left side is, like, wholly unorganized. While the one on the left side is much better in terms of organization, but they don't necessarily do too well in terms of uh, actually having like a decent plan, basically. Hmm. You are performing as expected, Professor. We will have to face you with our full might. Seems like you should have started with that. We will use the forest to ambush our enemy. Everyone, I am counting on your support. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of parallels here. <sighs> the new professor is rather strong. I suppose I'll have to call it a day. It was a good try.
Progress suits me well. My, my. The new professor seems very capable. There can be no victory unless I defeat you. So be it. Ha! Predictable. Yeah, you're gonna do what you must, and that's very, very you. And Axel, that'll be fun. Look at that, a real-life princess. I'll have to be careful not to scar that little face of yours. Careful, Claude. I'll win no matter what, but you're only making things harder for yourself. Losing hasn't even crossed your mind, has it? Ooh, this'll be a bit of a shock then. To shock was your intention to begin with, was it not? Man, Claude actually can back up his words this time. For all the shit talking, it's like for once he actually does something about Life it. Life doesn't always go as planned. Man, you have a couple bad levels up, a level ups to start, haven't you? Oh well. Still got room to grow. Forced to retreat. Well, things will only get tougher from here on out. Hard to disagree. Hard to disagree. Well done. I nearly wound up a patient in my own infirmary. This is what I do. I don't have time for failure! are paying off. Apologies, your highness. I can go no further. That's the golden deer for you. I expected as much. I actually won! <laughs> I'm getting better. Ah, one more pitiful guy left. Okay, I've got it now. That's all there is to know. Okay, cool. So they get class mastery even as adjutants. That's good. That's good to know. I didn't realize that they got that in that case, too. My goodness. Should I have held back? Such power dwells within. Yay! All right, that's that. The winner of this mock battle is... Ta -da -da -da. The Golden Deer House! Yay! Great work, everyone. Even if it's just a mock battle, the taste of victory is sugary sweet. I... Like, 99% of those turns were me just moving across the battlefield. Because I don't have good ranged attackers at the moment. Uh... Oh, was it not maxed out before? Well... Good for him then, I guess. Great work, Teach. That was a brilliant win. Yep, everyone did well. well. I guess the personality I'm giving to him is more about results, and the reason he chose Golden Deer is the idea that, um, basically he doesn't want to be in the other end of some scheme that Claude's, because realistically at this point Claude's probably the most suspicious one. So, if, if we're talking uh, about it in that way, basically he doesn't trust Claude. That's where we are in this. Well, I'm glad we won. Results orientated. I've been anticipating that magic moment when your tactics and my schemes entwined, and you did not disappoint. What schemes? Oh, come on. 
That composed expression you always sport like a permanent mask is a perfect complement to my ruthless schemes. That's a joke, of course. So not really. Mostly. To be honest, I had a bunch of other schemes planned as well, just in case the situation called for it. But I didn't have to resort to any of them. I suppose our opponents lucked out. Well met, Professor. The breadth of your skill was on full display today. I must admit that your tactics were masterful. I shudder to think what may have transpired had it been Claude leading us into battle. <laughs> I noticed that too! We just did what you told us, and we won! I love it! As expected from a child of the former Captain of the Knights. Thank you for today, Professor. I have much to consider. I never doubted that our Professor would be amazing. It was way too obvious. Don't you agree, Marianne? Huh? Me? Oh, um, yes, of course. Well done, Professor. Captain Gerald taught his child well. It would have been more of a surprise had our Professor proved lacking. Don't you think it's a bit harsh to give Gerald all of the credit, Leone? In any case, it's clear that we only won because of our new mentor's guidance. A mercenary's wisdom and techniques are forged in battle. Those are the sorts of things you can only learn through experience. Right, Teach? But more importantly, it's time to celebrate our victory. Teach here has yet to try my well-renowned home cooking. Ooh, this is new. I really do hope you'll join us. After all, I swiped some finely aged cheese from the dining hall for just this occasion. Man, they really dial it up on the, um, scheming and rule-breaking aspect, don't they? Your work with the students was... Rem Part 1. White Clouds. As you have already been notified, your mission is to subdue some bandits. Our students have been learning about combat through study, but this is a precious opportunity to provide them with practical experience. The experience of killing shit. And doing it with a smile. The Knights will support your mission and are prepared to offer their assistance if necessary. In short, this is no mock battle. You must be prepared for anything. You will receive a message from the Knights when it is time to depart. Until then, use your time wisely. More bandits. Not very original, Teach. <laughs> I know, I know. You need to focus, though. Well, as long as you're with us, at least things won't be boring. In fact, it may take a turn for the interesting. And with that, I take my leave to make my final preparations. For the thing at the end of the month. Got it. You seem well. Thank you. Can I not do tea yet? Huh, I thought that was like a professor level thing. Maybe I don't have any tea ingredients. Hmm. I don't remember ever having to buy tea ingredients, though. Oh, that does remove supports already? Oh, those do. Yeah, I guess that makes sense since they were uh, adjutants together. That does remind me. I didn't really check. One, store, two. The Chalice of Beginnings. That was in here, right? Or something. Yeah, yeah. Crafted by the Goddess nullifies extra effectiveness. Allows counterattacks at any range. <laughs> Now that sounds fucking good. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Whew. I could see lots of, lots and lots and lots of situations that would be useful in. Wow, okay. I'll have to think about that. Oh! Well, there are new options in this. I interesting. Well, maybe I shouldn't... Huh. Interesting. Is that the case for all of them? Yeah. Huh. Well, I'm not gonna push my luck on that right now. That looks weird. Okay, well, yeah, that's weird. Apparently there are multiple hair options now. Huh. 
Those bandits really didn't think things through, did they? They had to have known the knights would be after them the moment they entered the monastery's turf. Fine by me, though. I'm raring for some real combat experience. Any chance to grow is a good thing. Is there anything else you want to ask me, Teach? About oh, this? nah. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I can recruit all on my own. What's that? Hey, you. You're from up top, right? What business do you have here? Wait a minute. Ah, oh, got it. You're that new professor, aren't you? I suppose that means I have to let you pass. I guess, welcome to Abyss. This town is full of rough and toughs, so watch your back down here. Hmm. I'm sure you stop lots of people, buddy. Well, I didn't talk to him early on last time for obvious reasons, so... Yeah. Really? So, I, I'm gonna recruit Balthus and Constance eventually, just, you know, probably not early on. I haven't seen your... Need something? Uh, to ex in exchange for your renown, the influencer gather more people in the abyss for you. This unlock new activities, quests, and more. Yeah. Is this a lot like unlock episode third? Okay. Inspire worship. This one. Okay. Encourage recycling. This one. Oh, prices. And was 13 where the time skip happened? I'm not remembering. See you again I mean, soon. Yes, probably. Hey, Happy. Oh, you can join my on. class, right? Who are you? Wait, shut up. Let me guess. No. You're that new professor, right? You just started teaching up on the surface. Have we met before? Nah. Even here, people have been talking about you. Not that the gossip got everything right. I heard you were beautiful, but obviously that was an exaggeration. <laughs> Even in this one, you're just so mean. Oh. What? You want to know if I can help out? I've got time, but I don't want to spend it all serving the church. Don't make that face. Fine, fine. I'll back you up. Man, that was quick. Yeah, sure thing. You know? I've never really had a teacher before. And it'll be my first time at the Officer's Academy. Sounds like fun. Yeah, nice meeting you. Oh, Chatterbox. You been looking for me? I'd prefer not to visit the surface if I can help it. I don't want to run into any knights. Ah, uh, you'll be fine with me around. I think you'll be perfectly fine with me around, yeah? Especially now that you're in my class. Cycling. Scrap heap. Once each moon, you can find items here that the residents of the Abyss have discarded. Many of these will already been used. The more you use the influencer services, the more items you'll be able to pick up, and the more readily you will find them. Oh! So stuff like I can repair, basically. Okay. Probably cheaper. Well, maybe cheaper. I was expecting rusted stuff. Not, uh, not that, though. Oh, there's a quest down here. Huh. Whoever you are, it doesn't matter much to me. But I do advise getting out of here before you get tangled up in trouble. Unless you've been sent here under someone's orders. In which case, I'll happily show you a good time. <laughs> uh, I heard about a bit, so I came to find it. Well, I do like people with a healthy curiosity. You are aware of how dangerous it is down here. Yeah? Huh. You're that mercenary turned professor, aren't you? The one who showed up at the monastery kind of recently. Yeah. You're the one I've heard so much about. Well, I guess it's fine you're here then. You can call me Yuri. You'll want to remember that. If you ever come down here again. Yeah, sure. What's your quest? Can you take care of something for me? A professor who's dismissed from his position at the uh, Officer's Academy has made his home here. He could be a kind of mentor to you. Talk to him, maybe you can learn a thing or two. I guess. Learning to teach. Never had that opportunity before. Want my help, hmm? Sure, sure, why not? But I don't do anything for free. In exchange, 
Let me attend the lectures you give those noble kids, yeah? Oh, is that all you really want? I thought you already went here. It's a deal. Come on by whenever you need me. If you're wondering why I won't come up to you, it's because I've got people to watch over an abyss. Sure, why not? Ah, it's you. Bit of a trek coming all the way down here, huh? I'll be helping you out now. But just so you know, my life is still down here. If you can't find me in the classroom on the surface, you'll likely find me here instead. Sure, I have no objections. Unlock Offer Renown. Now you can use Renown to acquire weapons and items. Sure. Why not? Weapons. <laughs> That's a lot of good op- Rapier. A sword designed to exploit the weaknesses of armored and cavalry units. That's really light and really fat. Huh. Has high crit, too. Interesting. Okay. That's a lot of options. I'll definitely consider using that. And... Evasion ring speed, etc, etc, etc. And seals and the Abyssian exam pass, which is really what I was expecting here. Okay, cool. I'll be able to get those eventually. You are dismissed from your position, eh? Speak to the mysterious teacher to see how much your allies have grown from taking part in activity with, uh, activities with a meal. What do you require? Now let me see. Your guidance is lacking. Huh. What? Now let me see. Your guidance is lacking. I'm actually fairly confused as to what this is achieving. So... What are the blue and the reds? Like it's lower than you'd expect at his level? Like it's like relative to his base growth rate or something like that? Now let me see. Your guidance is lacking. Huh. I mean, it's not like I can control it at all at this point. Like, especially so. Now let me see. Your guidance is lacking. And if that's the case for you, then that especially shouldn't be the case, right? She hasn't gone up a level. Not yet. Now let me see. Same, Your same for all. Is same for all the level ones. Like, what the fuck is this supposed to be? Now let me see. Your guidance is lacking. Yeah, I keep saying my guidance is laughing. I'll Your punch you. Is fare thee well. Sort of. Sort of an ass. <laughs> Wise indeed to set me to this task. I'm an excellent cook. Really? Maybe. Why do I not believe you? This is hardly a palatable ingredient. But if we season it just right, nobody will be the wiser. Then again, you've probably been in the hard living life for a while, so not too surprising. <laughs> okay. I can get behind that. I've eaten many meals in my time, but this is divine. Wow, this is all kinds of tasty. With others is a nice change of pace. Usually I do it when I'm alone. There's someone who's slightly off. Oh well, that adds some color, I suppose. He does find the flaws in a lot of things, doesn't he? He really does. Hey there, Professor. Oh, that's not really sure what it is. You know, Professor, I keep hearing good things about you. I gotta admit, I'm curious. Wanna let me into your class? Sure, let's go. All right, that was easy enough. Well. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna run this place. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> oh, boy. So, the more I think about it, the more it seems somewhat reasonable that, at least for things that I'm going to be teaching, like uh, a various ones of these, for me to actually unlock these on mine, 
especially for things that I'm not planning to use on this character, basically. Because I'm not planning to use Lance at all. I wouldn't need to train it up myself either. I'm not planning to use flying or any of the associated skills. I'm not planning to do a lot of these things, essentially. That is a lot of renown, though. But it would also make me a better teacher of each individual one, basically. So I can get people up quicker. Because that is something I'm slightly worried about, given the fact that I'm getting so many people so early. Basically, it's just Annette and Mercedes that I'm probably going to get later on. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. This food is a revelation. <laughs> I can't help but smile when I eat it. I like this dish. It was my father's favorite. Wow, she's blushing hard in that, uh, portrait. Today's dish was so good. Oh, but not as good as your homemade sweets, Mercy. <laughs> You're too kind. Maybe I'll bake some for you next time, Professor. Could I at least persuade you to eat with utensils? Eyes on your own plate. Don't you know it's disrespectful to waste food? Oh, I get a feeling these two won't get along. Oh my. I really don't have anything to spend time on, do I? Huh. Okay. Huh. I either burn through food or I, uh... Do nothing, basically. Well, while I'm here, let's go. I'd say he's masturbating, but... Eh. There we go. Time for a break. So let's just assume, uh, unless I get really specific, that he's masturbating. And assume this conversation is based on that. Hey, Raphael. That's quite a load you've got there. <laughs> oh, Claude. You already went there. It was my turn to do the shopping again, but I might have overdone it. Aren't those trips usually for food supplies? Why did you pick up a bunch of spears and gauntlets as well? I was passing by the smithy, and the old man called me over. He said he was finished repairing the training weapons, so I grabbed them since I was already there. I see. And those books? I had just left the smithy when I ran into a merchant I recognized. He said he had some books that he brought for the library, so I took them off his hands. Right. And that desk? Oh, this? Can you believe someone threw this away? It only needs a little work and it'll be good as new. Someone around here was just saying that they needed a desk. Uh, of course. Now, this is just a friendly observation, but I see surprisingly little of the food supplies that we actually need. <laughs> well, I uh, worked up an appetite from carrying all this stuff. So, uh, I had a snack on my way back. Raphael. I appreciate the thought, but you can't get so carried away with helping out like that. You helped us all right out of dinner. And now that I've seen your struggle, I have no choice but to join in this vicious cycle of charity. Here, I'll lend you a hand. All of this stuff is pretty heavy. Are you sure you can handle it? You insult me. And no, I can't. I'll only carry the books and offer my support as you handle the rest. <laughs> well... That really didn't give much in terms of insight. <laughs> okay, sure. Sure, why not? Hey, Raphael. You heard a train? Hey, Kaspar! You work your muscles almost as much as I do. Of course. Everyone knows that if you skip a day, you lose three days of work. Ain't that the truth. Let's get to it, then. Is that the case? <sighs> That's probably enough for today. If you lose three days of work for every day you skip, I probably... I'm about, like, ten years back. Shoot. Maybe twenty. Oh no! Oh no! Well, I guess there's no point in getting started now. <sighs> you might be right. I'm exhausted. You know, I really envy you, Raphael. 
You're huge. I know I'm big. Everyone knows that. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm not very big, but I've always wanted to be. That's why I train so much. I just don't know how to bulk up. Is that all? I know how to fix that. Really? You gotta show me. Follow me! Food, right? Huh? You just led me to the dining hall. Food, 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 food. That's right. Now sit down and eat up. We're just gonna eat? Yep. Eating's the best way to get bigger. <laughs> when you're both fat and muscular at the you same gotta time. You eat, and you gotta train. Doing both enough, and you're sure to grow. Well, I always thought I was a pretty big eater, but maybe I wasn't eating enough? Or not often enough? Probably both. Look at my plate compared to yours. Now this is a meal. Whoa, your plate looks like a mountain. If that's what I gotta do, then I'm gonna eat until I can't anymore. I'll eat until there's no food left. That's the spirit. Come on, let's go clear out the pantry. Let's do it. I'm gonna eat till I can't move. Oh boy. No, don't. Casper, no, that's a bad idea. Oh. We're on a really high note in terms of like, things going positively to be in this, aren't we? We really are. Well, I motivated everyone, so I'm not gonna waste food on the other stuff. Don't tell me. No one bothered to show you the standard procedure for lectures? I guess it's up to me to save the day. Of course, I even met an old instructor and he didn't even teach me that. My oh my. That was easy. Not bad. It was... Cats. I... It started... Okay, so... Uh, basically try to focus on the higher level ones that might be getting to their beginner class soon. I gotta ask you something. I wanna eat meat and fish, but everyone in the dining hall says I gotta eat vegetables too. Bullshit, right? I'm never gonna get full on some stupid leaves. <laughs> Stop complaining and appreciate what you have. No. Eating vegetables will help your muscles grow. Makes sense to me. I suppose. If you say so, game. Friend. Uh, to be frank, I've never been at ease with lances or axes. I suggest that rather than thrusting one of those clumsy weapons in my hands, you help me cheat master with a sword. Haha, <laughs> no. I have very specific plans for all of you. You guys get no say whatsoever in absolutely anything. And that is the rule of law now. Come on then, let's get to it. Oh yeah, I'm ready to roll. Finally done. Not bad. Yeah, that would indeed describe good. That would indeed describe it. I guess I'm still growing. I got a grasp on this. Let's put this to the test. I'm looking sharp, huh? Okay. Sounds good. Why does Caspar have anything but... Did something happen with him? So did his motivation go up because he was around when I gave that answer to Raphael? Maybe. Actually makes some sense. I've never noticed that before, if so. Thanks. You can have uh, some flowers, etc, etc. And the day we must battle. Sure. Why not? When you don't have access to the Battalion Guild, so you actually can't replenish them. Yay! What a fun thought. You know, it might have been available if I went and talked to someone in the, uh, exploration, but I didn't, so... yay.
don't expect much more than that. I'm even tougher. <laughs> Gotta keep improving. <laughs> There's still a long way to go. Nobles must be strong. Oh, we can just do it again. No objections from me. I'm aiming high. I'll try even harder next time. I guess I feel a little stronger. Still got room to grow. Another step forward. Now that feels good. Nobles must be strong. Definitely tougher. Can't get comfortable. <laughs> I'm getting better. Leveling up people, little by little. Mainly focusing on trying to get their, uh, skills up more than anything. Uh... I've come to- What? How could I be wrong? Well, I don't have enough people in order to actually teach everyone with the motivation I have available. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Singing is nice, isn't it? The only thing is, I'd prefer to do it without an audience. Everyone should sing louder. It feels so good just to let it out. I'm getting the hang of this. Sure, why not? Masturbating. 
My goodness. Oh, Professor, are you here to train? Yes, that's that's what we call it. Training. I came to check on you. You should join me. Training is more important than worrying about me. Legs, back, chest, arms, abs. Gotta work them all, right? I just finished training, and I feel great. Check me out. Are my muscles bulging? I guess so? What answer do you want me to give? Yes? Another day of training, and my muscles are ready to burst. Bulging muscles means strength. I have to be strong if I want to be a proper knight. And I have to eat if I want to keep training. Time to feast. <laughs> Isn't studying also important for a knight? It's not just brute power, yeah? Ah, way to hit me where it hurts, Professor. I know I'll be in trouble if I don't train my brain, too. Anyone who can't get tactics can't be a proper knight. It's just, I'm no good at remembering that kind of stuff. And training my brain instead of my body makes me sleepy. What if I start training twice as hard? Then I should only have to study half as much, right? <sighs> you will never be a proper knight if you do not study. This is how the world works, I'm sorry. You really think so? I know so. I can't let that happen. I guess I have no choice. I'll prove I can do it. Wish me luck, Professor. For my training and for my studies. Sure, buddy. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> now you're motivated. Okay. Yay. Oh, sure. Didn't realize that went up so quickly. Well, look who it is. How are you, Chatterbox? Gotten the hang of the whole teaching thing yet? Not really, no. Oh, you're still finding your footing? That's not really the impression I got. You seem like one of those people who blends in. I could see you just about anywhere and think, Oh, that person's here. Makes sense. So, at this point, Emil's basically just like... Trying to... Again, the personality I'm thinking is someone who just sort of like... Comes from a mercenary background and how they coped with it was... Just... Efficiency. A little bit of ruthless uh, efficiency. As well as a bit of a chip on their shoulder about all of it. So just sort of like, what'll get the job done as simply and easily as possible. And that means, if you're going to be thinking in that regard, you're probably never going to be thinking very highly of your own uh, capability. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the things are going to end up going back to the same sort of like opinions and stuff as I had with Echo, but, you know, from a different perspective. Um, thanks? I wasn't paying you some sort of compliment. To me, it doesn't matter whether or not you believe in the goddess. You're wait, 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 wait. supporting the church, and that makes you no different from the others. I can't stand that. Man, you would have... <laughs> you might have liked that last round. You seem like one of those people who blends in. I can see you just about anywhere and think, Oh, that person's here. Makes sense. So, you were talking about believing in... Like, blending in with the church, basically. Well, okay. I'm sorry about that, then. No need to apologize. I just have a rocky history with the church is all. They betrayed me, or at any rate, horribly mistreated me. So I'm not a huge fan, but keep that to yourself. You were mistreated? I'm not shocked in the slice about the betrayed part. Mistreated, though. What did they do to you? When I was little, a lady locked me up and held me captive for a long time. The Knights of Saros rescued me, promised to protect me. But then they hid me away in abyss. So all the knights did was move me from one cage to another. Wouldn't you call that mistreatment? It was all for the greater good. They didn't want to put anyone important in danger. As for me, my life was expendable. Yeah, that seems to be the general rule of thumb. There are a lot more about their particular... They're not... They seem less so about the people. At least, the people seem to be a second priority to their desire to... Uh, implement the order that lets them do what they want, basically. 
That guy Alois was nice to me, though. And he told me a bunch of hilarious jokes to cheer me up. Wait, 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 wait. Hilarious. Are you sure? Are you okay? Should I should I get Manuela? Do they not have sarcasm where you come from? Keep up. Anyway. Oh my. That's why I hate the church. Someday you'll hate them too. They only hired you because they needed a warm body to fill the post. When you're of no use to them, they'll get rid of you without a second thought. Well, you're not wrong. Not entirely. Sorry, that sounded more menacing than I intended. I'm just telling you how these people think. They have rules. Dogma. They want us all bound to their system so they can control us. I don't do well with that sort of stuff. That's why I ran away from home in the first place. Which I am guessing led to you being in that original cage. You're not wrong. I'm generally inclined to agree with you. Run away. Yeah. Ran far, far away. But as far as I ran, it wasn't far enough. I got dragged back into society, chains and all. The kind of world I want doesn't exist. I won't say it doesn't exist, but... I would say, I don't think that it's true that it can't exist. I'm getting too dark for you, aren't I? Forget I said anything. Your future seems bright, at least. You can just sit back and enjoy whatever comes your way. I'm just saying, don't rest your entire future on the church. It's not as steady a foundation as it seems. Anyway, that's all. I'll be going now. Huh. She's definitely bitter. There's lots of things that can leave a person bitter, though, so... <laughs> Yay. Let's give it our all, hmm? Alright, come on. We've completed our task. They have the same pose, don't they? Oh, that's almost sad. That's... well, not almost. It is sad. Yeah, I've got this down. I think I get it now. I feel like I get it now. I think it's coming along. Oh yeah, getting the hang of it. Not as hard as I thought. As long as it makes me stronger. I learn with my heart, not my head. <laughs> <laughs> 